Hi guys. Well, now that Hurricane Zeta has passed through the great state of Virginia, it has turned into an absolutely spectacularly gorgeous fall of 2020 day here in the collapse of global industrial civilization here in Charlottesville, Virginia on this glorious Thursday, October 29th. 2020 <coughs> and uh, so guys I wasn't planning to do a chronicle of the collapse today I was really planning to take a few days uh, off but it has happened the, the number two story on the planet is the very article that I or versions of my reality have been waiting for for over 10 years it has been it was 10 or 11 years ago back when I was a, uh, a chemtrail wacko. Uh, <laughs> I, I am no longer a chemtrail wacko, but it makes no difference because my opinion has not changed on this one subject. Back when I was a chemtrail wacko, I was making the doomsday profit prediction that in the year 2020, in the year 2020, you would be finding the New York Times cheering on chemtrails, otherwise known as solar radiation management. Uh, you, know, you know, basically blocking the sunlight. Uh, it's what we're talking about uh, through chemtrails, which of course, uh, I I I anyway, we know what we're talking about, blowing this stuff out of the back of, of airplanes. So it makes no difference that I am no longer a chemtrail wacko uh, because the prediction never changed that in the year 2020 you could expect to see the New York Times cheering on chemtrails to save the planet. Well, guys, it is still 2020. The number two story on planet Earth today here at Yahoo News, the number two story directly from the New York Times, <laughs> directly from the pages of the New York Times. Da, 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 da. Take it away, New York Times. As climate disasters pile up, a radical proposal gains traction. Yes, and if you want to see a photograph of the radical proposal gaining traction to save a planet. There you go. There, there is a radical proposal to uh, save the planet. You, you know, even Al Gore uh, was talking about this in his book, The Future. Everyone from Al Gore to Alex Jones agreeing uh, <laughs> this uh, absolute slam dunk, no-brainer prediction 10 years ago that obviously we were going to end up here in the, in, in the year 2020. And here we are, you can set your watch by it. Take it away, New York Times. <clears throat> As the effects of climate change become more devastating, prominent research institutions and government agencies. Prominent institutions and government agencies hmm, are focusing new money and attention on an idea once dismissed as science fiction. Artificially cooling the planet in the hopes of buying humanity more time to cut greenhouse gas emissions, which is another way of saying buying the oil and gas industry more time to go right on ahead with business as usual. Make no mistake uh, who is cheering on uh, chemtrails in addition to these little lefty greeny environmentalists over at the New York Times. It is the oil and gas industry probably where a lot of this money is coming from. 
that strategy called solar climate intervention or solar engineering or chemtrails entails reflecting more of the sun's energy back into space, abruptly reducing global temperatures in a way that mimics the effects of ash clouds spewed by volcanic eruptions. We are the new volcano here. The idea has been derided. Hmm. The idea has been derided as a dangerous and illusory fix. Huh. The idea has been derided, you know, for the past 10 years, uh, since they started talking about it seriously, the idea has been derided, you know, by those doomers as a dangerous and illusory fix, meaning a hopium-soaked, apocalyptic, techno-utopian pipe dream is another word for illusory fix. One that would encourage people to keep burning fossil fuels. Thank you, New York Times, while exposing our planet to unexpected and potentially menacing side effects. Yeah, can you say a new ice age? <laughs> you know, global heating will be the, the least of our problems once they go, oops, and then nowhere mentioned in this story are you going to find that once you go down this route, you can never stop. Once this toothpaste is squeezed out of the tube, you will need to keep squeezing the, the, the toothpaste out of the tube for eternity because if you ever stop squeezing the chemtrail toothpaste out of the tube, Assuming, uh, you know, suspending all disbelief that this, that this, uh, uh, you know, this techno utopian pipe dream has any chance of succeeding. If you ever stopped, we would uh, be more screwed than ever. Uh, anyway, so thank you, New York Times. But then we get to the B word. But, but, as Global warming continues, producing more destructive hurricanes like the one that just blew through here, producing more destructive hurricanes, wildfires, floods, and other disasters. Some researchers and policy experts, can you say the CEO of Exxon, for instance, say that concerns about geoengineering should be outweighed by the imperative to better understand it in case, just in case, the consequences of climate change become so dire that the world cannot wait for better solutions. Better solutions. So uh, here we go down the slippery slope with the New York Times and probably NPR leading the charge and also, as I've been predicting, what you're going to see unfolding as the mainstream media, as the New York Times and these research institutions and all of this, this becomes the latest uh, fear-mongering meme. You know, like the corona panic, you're going to see more and more and more uh, clueless moron, little lefty greenies lining up by good, like good little sheep. Uh, this is, you know, I've been wondering what the next chapter in the playbook was. You know, is it going to be a, an alien intervention? Uh, I mean, an alien attack? Uh, that one is still in the playbook. Uh, or are we going to move directly in to chemtrails to save the planet? Uh, okay, let's listen to Michael Gerard 
director of the Sabine Center for Climate Change Law at Columbia Law School, <clears throat> quote, we're facing an existential threat and we need to look at all the options. I liken geoengineering to chemotherapy for the planet. Yes, uh, I liken geoengineering to chemotherapy for the planet. If all else is failing, you try it. Yes, if all else is failing. Yes, well, all else is failing because there is no all else. So on Wednesday, I guess this means last Wednesday, a nonprofit organization called Silver Lining, Silver Lining announced a nonprofit organization called Silver Lining announced three million dollars in research grants. Uh, I have not done my journalist due diligence. I have not uh, dug into who the hell the what is it called the who silver lining is and who is it that threw in the three million dollars i i would not be surprised well I, I i would be surprised if the majority of the three million dollars uh seed money for silver linings did not come from uh, the oil and gas industry, although you better believe that it will be channeled through, you know, these dark money channels uh, where it won't be obvious. Where do you think this $3 million is coming from? With $3 million, uh, you know, it, uh, it, 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 is, it, it is a joke anyway. All right, so who are some of these prestigious uh, institutions? Wow, why don't we start in Ithaca, New York? with Cornell University. How about the University of Washington? You know, they're the ones who keep putting out all these terrifying corona panic reports. Rutgers University and the National Center for Atmospheric Research and others. The work will focus on practical questions such as how high in the atmosphere to inject sunlight reflecting aerosols, how to shoot the right sized particles into clouds to make them brighter, and let's do not forget the effect on the world's food supply. Yes, the effect on the world's food supply. Kelly Wanzer, Kelly Wanzer, Silver Linings Executive Director said, the world is running out of time and protecting people, protecting people requires trying to understand the consequences of climate intervention. She said the goal of, you know, her group's work called the Safe Climate Research Initiative was, quote, to try to bring the highest caliber people to look at these questions, close quote. All right, the research announced Wednesday adds to a growing body of work already underway. You know, back in December, Congress gave the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration $4 million to research uh, the technology. NOAA will also start gathering data that will let it, meaning the U.S. government, detect whether other countries start using geoengineering secretly. And, and of course, guys, there, there's nothing to stop any country on the planet uh, from doing this. Uh, and of course, Australia is funding experiments, you know, looking into this, to determine whether and how the technology can save the Great Barrier Reef. Okay, we're gonna list, listen to Chris Saka. Chris Saka is the co-founder of Lower Carbon Capital. Lower Carbon Capital, an investment group that is one of Silver Linings 
funders. Wow. Lower Carbon Capital, an investment group. Ha. Huh. If you want to make money off the collapse of a planet, start putting your money into silver linings that, uh, you know, geoengineering schemes are going to be one of the biggest money makers in the 21st century. Anybody wanting to make easy uh, moolah off the collapse of a planet, there you go. You need to call right now your stockbroker and get your money invested in lower carbon capital. Take it away, Chris. Look, decarbonizing, you know, which probably means sucking the carbon out of the air is probably what he means by decarbonizing in this case. Decarbonizing is necessary, but that's going to take 20 years or more. If we don't explore climate interventions like sunlight reflection now, we are surrendering countless lives, species, and ecosystems to heat, close quote, and, and we are going to get back to this at the end of this, uh, end of this, uh, story here, uh, I will come back to, to this, uh, point here in a minute. All right. One way to cool the earth is by injecting aerosols into the upper layer of the atmosphere, where those particles reflect sunlight away from the earth. That process works! Yes, according to Douglas McMartin, a researcher in mechanical and aerospace engineering at Cornell University in Ithaca, New York, whose team received funding. Quote, let's listen to the Cornell professor, quote, we know with 100% certainty that we can cool the planet, close quote. McMartin said, back to the New York Times, what is still unclear, he added, is what happens next. What is unclear is what happens next when we squeeze this toothpaste out of the tube, we go into the single biggest playing God experiment on, on this planet that we have ever attempted as this uh, bunch of tool-using apes uh, is what happens next. Uh, for anybody who does not understand it, uh, let's look at temperature. Now, of course, this, this goddamn sunlight is making it tough for me. I, I wish I could get some geoengineering uh, so I could read this story. Uh, temperature, McMartin said, is a proxy for a lot of climate effects. Quote, what does it do to the strength of hurricanes? What does it do to agriculture yields? What does it do to the risk of forest fires? Close quote. To help answer those questions, McMartin will model the specific weather effects of injecting aerosols into the atmosphere above different parts of the globe and also at different altitudes. Quote, depending on where you put it, you will have different effects on the monsoon in Asia. You will have different effects on Arctic sea ice. Close quote. Yes. Uh, another institution getting money as part of the new initiative is the National Center for Atmospheric Research in Boulder, Colorado, which in turn is funded by the National Science Foundation and has what its researchers call the world's most sophisticated earth system 
model. All right. The grant from Silver Lining will pay for the center to run and analyze hundreds of simulations of aerosol injection, testing the effects on weather extremes around the world. One goal of this research is to look for a sweet spot. Yes, look for a sweet spot, which is defined by the New York Times as the amount of artificial cooling that can reduce extreme weather events without causing broader changes in regional precipitation patterns or similar impacts such as going into an ice age overnight. This is Jean-Francois Lamarck, uh, director of the Center's Climate and Global Dynamics Laboratory, quote, is there a way, is there a way in our model world at least to see if we can achieve one, meaning save the planet, without triggering too much of the other, meaning destroying a planet quicker than the climate change ever would have on its own. Uh, NOAA is starting its own research into solar engineering, yes, and in August that agency announced that it would begin measuring aerosol levels in the stratosphere, creating a baseline um, so the agency can tell if those levels change later. One of the advantages of that information uh, according to Troy Thornberry, a research scientist at, at NOAA, is that it would let NOAA, meaning the U.S. government, determine if aerosol levels increase would be a sign that some other country may be intentionally, may be intentionally injecting aerosols without announcing it. Of course, injecting aerosols into the stratosphere is not the only way to bounce more of the sun's rays back into space. The Australian government is funding research into what's called marine cloud brightening. I, I know Paul Beckwith, I don't know if Paul is still on uh, record for being a cheerleader of marine cloud brightening, which is not quite chemtrails, it is meant to make clouds more reflective by spraying salt water into the air. Uh, the goal is to get salt particles to act as nuclei in those clouds, encouraging the formation of many small water droplets, which will increase the brightening of the clouds. Australian researchers hope the technique can save the Great Barrier Reef. Yes, we are going to spray droplets of salt water into the air uh, to save the Great Barrier Reef. Rising water temperatures during so-called so -called marine heat waves are accelerating the die-off of the reef and making marine clouds more reflective may be able to cool water temperature enough to slow or even stop that decline. Yes, you go techno-utopians. Uh, one of the challenges of, you know, of cloud brightening will be using the technology on a large enough scale to make any difference. Do you think so? One of these cloud brightening cheerleaders estimated it would probably take 500 to 1,000 stations such as barges or platforms spraying water to cover the entire great barrier reef. Uh, yes, 
you know, th th this goes on and on. Here's the University of Washington is also uh, has something called the Marine Cloud Brightening Project. Uh, is, is building spray nozzles that consistently produce the right size particles. Uh, quote, <clears throat> this is quoting uh, Sarah Doherty, program manager from the Marine Cloud Brightening Project. Quote, the whole idea of the research we are doing is to make sure, is to make sure you do not go out and inadvertently change things in a way that is going to cause damage. Meaning that, uh, you know, that as we've seen uh, in other instances here in 2020, that the cure is not worse than the disease and this is the bottom line uh, of this argument guys and and, and you know I, I've just been worn down by this uh, I, I might surprise people who uh, hear, hear me say this but I you know after uh, you know making predictions 10 years ago that you were going to be reading this story in the New York Times in 2020, what has happened uh, in my own worldview over the past 10 years, you know, I was radically opposed to this 10 years ago, but guys, th this whole thing uh, is, is one more example of the frying pan or the fire choice uh, we get to make as a planet in the 21st century. We are done for. We're, we're, we're screwed. There are no solutions. Anybody thinking that, that this crap is going to save the planet from climate change at this point is, is, is every bit as clueless as anybody who thinks that uh, if we just sit back and let climate change take its course, it's not going to pan out uh, to be, uh, you know, the final chapter uh, that it's going to be. It doesn't make any difference, guys. It's, you know, it's the difference between voting for Donald Trump or Joe Biden. Uh, either way we go on this, we are toast. Uh, there is no way out. Uh, th th this, this is one of these classic uh, frying pan versus the fire choices that we are making on this planet in the 21st century is, is this whole solar radiation management uh, BS. Uh, anyway, at, at this point, knock yourself out. But uh, my only advice is if you're looking to make money uh, in the end times is to go invest in that whatever, you know, in, in, in chemtrail technology. And uh, you will get to have last one hurrah with the money you're going to make. But I have got to wrap this up because it is a gorgeous day and I need to go gas up my gas sucking truck because I am pulling out of here tomorrow and heading to Augusta, Georgia. Augusta, Georgia, where I'm going to be hanging out with a nuclear physicist buddy of mine. So uh, maybe we can get the nuclear physicist to uh, offer some insights on the state of the planet uh, here in the year 2020. So anyway, not sure I will have another chronicle of the collapse or not we shall see but if you enjoyed this little uh, frying pan or the fire uh, debate uh, please thumb up this video by all means uh, if you feel like subscribing we would greatly appreciate it and uh, of course I really really appreciate 
Uh, I want to thank Gritty Chops. Thank you, Gritty Chops, for being the latest person, a kind-hearted listener, to become my latest Patreon supporter. So anyone who has ever supported what I do on YouTube, Sancho Panza, and I really, really do appreciate it. And with that, get out there and enjoy this spectacular day on the planet while you still can. Bye, guys. This little dog, we need to go to the gas station.